Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to a discussion piece revolving around the King of the Ring. Now, it's been a little while since I've done one of these discussion pieces and I would like to kind of get into the flow of doing them a little bit more often. So every now and then when um, I have kind of a free Tuesday in the month when I'm not doing a Raw After or an NXT um, old show review, a kind of an old takeover show review, I'd like to get in um, a few other bits and pieces. The last time it was a booking video, this time I thought I would do a discussion video. And as I said, around the King of the Ring. Now, the King of the Ring as a monthly pay-per-view died in 2002. Uh, they did bring it back uh, a couple of times as sort of uh, one-off tournaments that uh, culminated at other pay-per-views. Um, I believe 2006, uh, 8 and I want to say like 2012 I think. Um, the winners of those being uh, Booker T. Seamus and uh, Wade Barrett. But mainly what I want to focus on is the period between 1993 and 2002 when this was a uh, monthly or a, an annual monthly pay-per-view. So you would have kind of some qualifying matches usually uh, on weekly broadcast and then have um, at least the sort of semi-finals and the final on the King of the Ring pay-per-view. Sometimes you would have more rounds. There were a couple of years where the whole tournament was in um, a single night. And this was basically used to kind of earmark future stars, really. It was to give them a, a platform with which to kind of try and put themselves over and to see how the crowd responded to them and to see how they responded with the, that kind of added pressure and responsibility. Could this be somebody that the company could kind of, um, in, in the future, revolve their television broadcast around? Could they be one of the major champions on Raw or later SmackDown? Um, and indeed kind of boost buy rates for pay-per-views, things like that. Now, before 1993, this was sort of a one-off tournament that was done almost as a house show. Um, and so I'm not really too concerned with that period. But starting from 1993, we saw our first champion in Bret Hart. And that sort of thing makes sense at the time. It was kind of the middle of the new generation sort of um time period so those kind of smaller younger more athletic uh, technical wrestlers were kind of the um, what the, the World Wrestling Federation at the time was trying to push obviously this was kind of in and around the whole steroid issues and Hulk Hogan going and coming back uh, significantly leaner shall we say um, and it kind of shows the the new vision and the new direction that um, the World Wrestling Federation was going in at the time. This was then followed a year later by Owen Hart. So again, they're kind of following along that uh, sort of trajectory um, just to kind of give these guys uh, a decent platform going forward. And by and large, by the time we get to 2002, um, Brock Lesnar being the final winner of the tournament in its kind of most traditional sense. Um, again, that was kind of the beginning of the Ruthless Aggression era. And he kind of epitomised that um, period of the what was then the WWE. Now, of course, there were a couple of duds here or there. Um, most notable are the years of 1995 when Mabel won and 1999 when Billy Gunn won. But I would say these are kind of the most major uh, hiccups. There were a couple of others um, being Ken Shamrock and Owen Hart that after they won the King of the Ring they didn't go on to capture at least one world title that being the WWF or WWE title 
the World Heavyweight title or the Universal title. However, by and large, a lot of success was had once they had won the tournament, as we can see from these figures here. Now, starting at the top here, obviously we have Bret Hart winning in 1993, and we go all the way down to Brock Lesnar winning in 2002. Now, what I have um, marked up here are the victories that they have in um, obtaining the tag belts. Now, they can be any of the tag belts that were around um, when they were wrestling. Um, so, obviously, there have been slightly different lineages where we had the brand split and the reunification, things like that. So, I've taken all of those into account. The Intercontinental title, which has been kind of the most significant mid-card title that's been around since well before this um, King of the Ring format and up until obviously the modern day. There was a slight period around 2002 when it was kind of taken out of commission but it was reintroduced fairly quickly. And world title, again this covers the WWF or E title, the world heavyweight title, not to be confused with the WCW title I might add, or the uh, universal title. Now we can see here all these numbers are the title belts that they have won before they won their King of the Ring in the year that they won. And clearly the most successful two guys here really um, would have to be Edge and probably either Billy Gunn or Bret Hart. Obviously Billy Gunn and Edge, as you can see there, won a huge amount of tag titles before winning um, the King of the Ring. But obviously the King of the Ring was uh, basically brought in to kind of see what these guys do in a singles um, capacity. So maybe kind of put that to one side slightly. Um, in terms of singles titles won, obviously Bret Hart is the only man here that won a world title before he actually won the King of the Ring tournament. Um, but in terms of intercontinental titles, he won two himself. Triple H won one. Kurt Angle won his one and only intercontinental title belt. And Edge won one as well. Now, if we see what the figures are for what they won after they won the King of the Ring... As you can see, what I was saying about Mabel is very much justified. He won the one tag belt, um, Men on a Mission, him and Mo, uh, before he won the King of the Ring and then never saw any gold after that. Ken Shamrock, again, he won an IC belt and tag belt afterwards. That was kind of when he became part of the um, corporate um, regime. Um, but unfortunately he kind of didn't stick around long enough to sort of see where this was uh, going really which is obviously a shame for him but I think you will agree the kind of two standout guys here are Triple H going from no world titles 1 to 14 and Edge going from none to 11 uh, Lesnar obviously also very significant and Austin there um, six and five wins. Um, obviously Austin also winning four tag belts and two intercontinental belts. And Angle as well pretty good in terms of winning um, the tag belts once and five world championships. Um, the only other kind of significant victories after actually winning the King of the Ring would be uh, Billy Gunn's five tag belts. Um, yes he did win an IC belt fairly briefly. Um, and Edge's seven tag belts as well. Um, that was kind of around the time when he was sort of dipping into the IC um, upper mid card as well and was kind of tagging with various other people. His seven wins beforehand were all with Christian. His ones after, I believe I'm right in saying that none of them were with Christian. They were with the likes um, of Chris Benoit, um, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, guys like that. And then obviously he won another four intercontinental belts. But more significantly, uh, he actually finally made it into the um, world title picture. And what is interesting is that there were actually only four guys that never did. Um, I think Owen Hart's 
main issue there was probably more political rather than obviously a lack of ability. He did win four tag belts and two intercontinental belts and probably should have won a world title. I think that's fairly universally agreed by most fans. Mabel, yeah, Mabel is Mabel. Billy Gunn never really felt right. Um, and in 1999, with the likes of the Big Show and Kane in that tournament, kind of maybe feels like they should have been um, the guys that would have then been elevated more by winning that tournament. But as you can see, by and large, the, uh, the winners of the King of the Ring go on to a very great success. So why not bring it back today? Why not give uh, the winner of the King of the Ring tournament a shot at the WWE or Universal title or if you don't want to go all in on them straight away give them a shot at the Intercontinental or US title it would work wonders for guys that have kind of been bubbling around the mid card um, people like Cesaro give them a chance with it um, the guys in the New Day because they are kind of wanting to branch them out as singles competitors as well um, someone like Big E winning it could be huge for really legitimising the fact that they really seriously want to make this guy a world champion. Let's not forget he is a former NXT champion. You could also use it to kind of reset somebody's career. Somebody like a Bray Wyatt or even a Finn Balor if you're not quite sure um, if they're really ready for world titles again. Obviously both of them have won one previously but uh, in obviously the case of Finn's hit was cut short due to injury and Bray was very much just a transitional champion for Randy Orton but those kind of people could be utilised in a much better way it could be uh, an excellent way as I said with the likes of the New Day splitting other tag teams up um, and seeing what they can do in a solo capacity. Many people have kind of alluded to the fact that Vince McMahon didn't really like the concept and once the buy rates were dropping um, in the early 2000s he kind of used that as an excuse to shut it down but clearly the tournament format is something the WWE are very interested in at the moment. Obviously we had the Cruiserweight Classic which crowned a new Cruiserweight Champion. We had the Mae Young Classic last year and that is being revived again this year. We had the United Kingdom tournament to crown the first ever uh, WWE United Kingdom champion. We had that repeated again this year as well. There had been rumblings of uh, some kind of Mexican or luchador style tournament as well, although William Regal uh, vehemently rejects this. We have tournaments to crown new champions all the time, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the SmackDown Women's Champion in 2016. They were both decided in tournament format. We are having a mini tournament at the moment to determine new number one contenders for the SmackDown Tag Titles. We had the similar thing over on Raw as well. There is also talk of introducing a Women's Tag Team championship chances are that will be competed within a tournament as well not to mention the fact down in nxt we had two tournaments to crown women's champions we have the dusty cup for all the tag teams down there as well this is something that they do fairly often and pretty successfully as well they seem to book them in very interesting and very appealing ways usually the winner is is very justified and uh, deserving of their spot at the top and I just think it would be a very good way of not only elevating these new superstars you could also kind of have a raw bracket and a smackdown bracket and they could kind of culminate you could almost have a final of each bracket as your semi-finals at the beginning of the pay-per-view and then your main event could be for the overall winner, your kind of final person on Raw versus your final person on SmackDown in the main event to determine the new King of the Ring. Finally, why stop at just King of the Ring? Why not use this as uh, rebranding and an opportunity to bring in a Queen of the Ring as well? Why does this have to be a male only tournament? Obviously China many many years ago did compete in the King of the Ring and was unsuccessful but we could easily have a women's based tournament as well especially if it was uh, over both brands and not just the one with the winner getting a title shot against the Raw or the Smackdown Women's Champion. 
So there we go. They are my thoughts on bringing back the King of the Ring tournament. What do you make of it? Do you agree with me? Do you think it would be a very good way of bringing guys up to the next level? What are your thoughts on potentially having a Queen of the Ring tournament as well? Is that something that could be done and should be done? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will see you very soon for another discussions video like this. But until then, I've been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.